festival and uh, also uh, recognizing the contributions of Kate, both Neil, Peters, and Sturgeon to this uh, wonderful legacy of music that we have in our region and, and their contributions to it. This is the uh, 50th anniversary of the uh, first festival and um, matter of fact, uh, Doc Boggs uh, played uh, his last performance in 1970 at the festival. He closed that set by singing No Death, and little was it known that that would be his last public performance at the time. I'd like to uh, make sure everybody knows that there's wonderful food here at the festival. That's part of the what you expect to get when you come here. Uh, soup beans, cornbread, hot dogs, fried apple pies. So uh, when your hunger gets you, just go uh, next door to the cabin and uh, get a fix on that. Uh, my name's Fred McClellan. I'm uh, pleased to be here and be with you and uh, be a part of this celebration. Uh, for the last 11 years, several years, I've been here as a host, and uh, for the last two or three, I haven't, and I've been really looking forward to coming back again, and um, just glad to be here. With that anticipation and excitement, I was just wondering, how was the weather going to be? I've been looking on the 10-day forecast, and there was a 60% chance of showers, so uh, I think we're doing pretty good on the weather right now. I hope that holds out and uh, that the sun will shine on us. When I woke up this morning, I thought I'd better read my horoscope just to know uh, what was in store, and I'll share that with you. It says a change will lift your spirits. Participate in something that you find stimulate. Doing pretty good so far. An adventure will lead to an exciting encounter that will have an impact on your life. So, like I said, I'm glad to be here. This festival uh, started as a uh, part of a school project. My uh, dear friend Jack Wright started it back in 1969. And um, I'm going to read from his remarks about that. And as a teenager, growing up in Wise, Virginia, I had been striving to be a musician. Still, I had no idea that Doc even existed, much less was influencing American culture. But that was to change after my tour in Vietnam and my discharge from the Army. Upon my return home, I enrolled at Clinch Valley College, that is now known as the University of Virginia's College of Wise, and Jack went thanks to a GI Bill. His sociology teacher, Helen Lewis, knew that he picked the guitar and sang a little bit. When she asked for ideas for individual class projects, Jack said, I proposed a small music festival and end of the semester music party. She offered a budget of $450. That's a lot of money back then from funds left over from an educational grant. Helen was very aware of the local culture and great at pointing people in the right direction. She encouraged me to go down and meet Doc Boggs, the banjo player and singer who lived in nearby Needmore, Virginia. So I looked Doc's number up in the phone book and called. In his gentle, friendly manner, he invited me to come down and visit any time. Some of my rock and roll musician friends had heard of Doc. I remember one of them saying, Oh yeah, he's that old man that used to drive a laundry truck down to Norton, and he sells people his records of folk music out on the street. Well, I'm pleased that this uh, festival has continued. It was, um, the first couple of years was held up on the high knob. It then moved to the campus of the college and for a number of years it was there when uh, this festival was at risk of not continuing as an annual festival. Uh, Nancy and Bill Jones uh,
took over the festival and have taken great care of it here at the Country Cabin since. I think it's important that we do remember the contributions of Doc and Kate, but it's also important that we honor the legacy of this music of our region and how important it is to all of us and always has been. Let's, uh, through the uh, day, I'll, I'll make remarks about who was Doc, what's the significance of his music, talk a little bit about Kate and her contributions and significance, and always reflect on how this music has contributed to others far and beyond our region. I'll uh, go over the uh, list of performers today. Matt Heckler will start us out here in a few minutes. Bluegrass Circle, the Miss Ellie String Band, Mountain Emporer Community College, Appalachian Strings, Empty Bottle String Band, Crooked Road Ramblers, and we'll end today with uh, Sunrise Bridge. A lot of uh, traditional mountain music with a, a dash of bluegrass in between. I think it's good that we all start this uh, day with someone who was influenced by this music, by Don, by Roscoe Cole. He's not a native of the region, but he has studied the music and done a pretty daggone good job of studying it. He uh, lived in the Catskills, lived in Alaska, and now lives in Boone. Excuse me, lives in Asheville, and he's trying to make his way here. So uh, this was a good opportunity for him to come up, meet some of the fine folks here, and hopefully be able to someday call this place home. So if we will, let's get this thing started, and let's welcome to the stage Matt Heckler.
I appreciate that this is a no drinking or any substance event. I'm a full time musician and a lot of times I'm playing for a sea of drunk people. And sometimes it's great, they love it and they're cheering, but sometimes I'm like, how are you even standing? <laughs> how did you make it in here? So it's real nice just playing for some people, coming out for some good music.
sometimes after a month long tour and you're singing for a thousand people every single night, you go to hit those high notes and it comes out straight Tarzan, pterodactyl sound. And it's, luckily I had a couple weeks off so I saw a little bit of a voice.
you give him a hand? Make him feel well. I think that was a good way to start it off with someone that's been influenced by this music and uh, being self-taught and coming here to where Doc Boggs was from to, uh, to share his music with us.